Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to make this vehicle example that I showed last video have the camera attached and following it so that the game has a much better feel to it than having a static camera. So to do this what you want to do is you want to open up our previous blend file and over here we have the player with the mechanic and obviously uh, the camera. Now the camera make sure it is in the right position where you want it to be and here you can select the camera, shift select the object, press ctrl p pairing them together and now when we move the player the camera is going to be locked together. Now this is a very rudimentary and crude method because it's very solid, it's constantly in the middle of the screen. So what we want to do instead is we're going to press shift s add the cursor to the camera, add an empty to that uh, camera position, the camera's origin and also add the rotations of the camera to that empty so they have the same location, rotation and scale, the same properties. Now what we're going to do is we're going to act as if the empty was the camera and parent it to the object. And that way we're going to be able to have a location in 3D space where our camera would be if it was parented. But instead we're going to be able to uh, set our camera to be at the location of the empty with a bit of offset to add some influence. Now in Blender if you wanted to do this then you'd probably use a constraint and you can see we have this constraint that allows you to control the influence. But this is a Blender only feature, Armory does not support blender constraints and as a result we have to use logic nodes to do the same thing. So select the camera, go down to the army traits and select and create a new node tree. Now this node tree I'm going to call camera alert but you can call it whatever you want. Let's open up in the logic node editor and start adding some logic nodes. So the first one we need is an on update node. The reason being we need to update the camera's position every single frame. So with the set object location node we just need a position to move it to and the position is going to be that of the empty object. And so what we're doing here is essentially we're getting the camera and we're updating the camera's position to be that of the uh, position of the empty. And so what we're getting is the same uh, result as method number one. However this opens up the doorway of possibilities to interpolate the rotation. What we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and get the set object rotation node and we're going to interpolate the values so they're not as stiff and rigid as in method number one but we have a lot more control over them and make them more smooth. So let's get a rotational math node, set it to lerp. Lerp is a function that allows us to interpolate linearly between two different values. In this case we're going to get the rotational values of the camera like you can see in that node and obviously of the empty. But when you come to the empty, make sure you set it to be global instead of local in that little drop down right here. And I drop the empty obviously. Now what we have here is the ability to control the rotational interpolation of our camera. So it's not going to be as rigid and solid and focused and tracked onto our player. It's going to have a bit more loose to it. So you can see when we move forwards and backwards, nothing changes because we haven't interpolated those values. But when we move left to right... Uh, with the AND key you can see we have our player that is moved slightly to the left or to the right depending on where you click and this means that uh, the camera is no longer as locked onto the subject like it was previously so the experience is a lot smoother and more pleasing to the eye. This whole function relies on uh, modifying and smoothing out the values. So essentially we can modify and replace this node using the rotation tween node. And so what we're going to do is just plug the exact same node sockets into here and add the tick to the set rotation and the value to the value. And now we can just uh, do the exact same thing as we did previously except using the tween node because the methods are the same thing. We're getting the value uh, the rotational value of the camera and the empty and we're smoothing out those two different uh, values with an interpolation value or here a duration and we're setting that to be the new rotation essentially giving it a much a floatier feel to it and avoiding it feeling really really rigid because it's an important part of making a game feel more lively now what we can also do is uh, change the different interpolation types you can see here we have different uh, many many different ways and types of ways that interpolations can happen. So far I've showed how to smooth out the relationship between the player and the camera but only on the rotation values. You can see when you turn left and right it's smoothed out but what if you want to go backwards and forwards and have the camera move depending on your object's position in 3D space? Well to do that we can't apply the same method as we did for the rotation because this is a, is a position in 3D space so we need to move the vector move towards node. 
So we're going to get the same camera locations like we did with the camera rotation and we're going to plug them in and we can use a small value for the delta. Uh, the larger the value, the more stiff the camera will be. It'll be like it's just parented naturally like we showed in method number one. But if you put it to zero, it'll be very loose. So let's put something like 0.01. Now we can use a vector math node set to subtract and we're going to subtract the result of the move towards node with the original location of our empty. And once we have this we're going to use a vector clamp node to clamp it between 0 and 1. The reason we need to clamp it is because these values are way too big. So by clamping it out we'll be able to use these values in our current situation. Now we can use a vector math set to add and we're going to get that clamped result with the original location of the empty once again and that is going to be the position of our camera or more like the position that our camera is allowed to move around in between this calculated location from the uh, location of the empty to uh, the maximum position it can go this is how far the camera is going to be able to move around in the scene so we never lose track of the actual player because we're always uh, looking around uh, at the position of the empty with a bit of offset but never going too far. So this is a much better way to control the relationship between the camera and the player because it's less locked in, less rigid and overall just a lot more fun to do. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you understood this tutorial. Until next time, take care.